Good morning, lovely Zoe to see with some more Pokemon Go goodness for you. And today we are up uh, at Fushiminari Shrine in Kyoto, Japan. So Nick and I are currently exploring the shrine. We've both been here before, um, but unfortunately due to the recent typhoon, most of both of the paths up to the top of the shrine are completely closed. There was a lot of trees that fell down um, across the walk paths which are being cleared at the moment. So this kind of was the spot where I wanted to catch my shiny pineco. Um, and I also wanted to show the guys a really cool uh, hidden waterfall uh, and like wood carving spot. So we're going to try and make an attempt to trek around uh, the back streets of Kyoto and make like a, a entrance to the forest, like through the through a back street, through like back tracks and things like that. See if it works, if they're not closed either. <laughs> Fingers crossed. But otherwise today is just going to be a little day of exploring and we're going to talk about the Ultra Unlock and my uh, thoughts and feelings on the Ultra Unlock that was announced last night. And I want to hear from you guys as well, what are your thoughts and feelings on the Ultra Unlock too? So we're going to discuss those points today and do some exploring, so let's rock and roll. I've never had a shiny cart before. This is ridiculous. I want to take a picture of it. Full odds. Full odds. Full odds shiny magic cart in the most magical place on earth. Actually, yeah. Oh, I want to take a picture, but do I risk it? I've yeah. never had a shiny cart before. Ever? Ever. I got one for you. If you let's do it. this. Let's go. <laughs> Okie dokie, I'm gonna do it your style, Red Bull. Yep. I guess it's a magic card. It's just a magic card. got this, right? Easy. Hey, competent one-handed throw. Well, it's about Locked in. That's incredible. It's been two years since Magic Cup's been out. This is actually your first this one. This is my, legitimately my first ever. Thank you, Japan. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at him. A praise. Not like. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I love her. She's beautiful. Let's keep going.
How you doing there? It's not a bit of a swim. Oh my goodness. Okay, so as you guys just saw, uh, my camera ended up in a stream, in the river, in the waterfall, essentially. I was taking a time-lapse shot and I made the mistake of turning my back on my camera and it just fell. It tumbled absolutely in to the stream and it was in the water for a good 30 seconds before I realized I didn't hear a thing. So rip my camera. Um, thank you to Geo, the Universal, for lending me this current camera, uh, his spare camera. He just happened to bring it just as a backup. Uh, and he's going to be lending that to me for the rest of this trip. So thank you so much, Gio. I really, really appreciate it. Absolute lifesaver. As I'm speaking just now as well, I realize this is a very echoey spot. So sorry for the audio, guys. But yeah, the rest of the footage for this video is shot on my iPhone. Um, but I just wanted to jump in and actually talk about the ultra bonus stuff. But my thoughts on the ultra bonus unlock. So main points. Uh, Mewtwo is now going to be available through uh, regular raids. So no EX raids, Mewtwo is available. I am stoked with that, seriously. Um, I am someone who tried to trigger EX raids every other week. I'm someone who had to miss EX raids every other week uh, because of location or travel or things like that. Yes, I'm spent someone who spent money on raid passes uh, to try and trigger EX raids, etc, etc. I'm stoked about this because I don't have a Mewtwo over 91%. I really want to get a useful and functional Mewtwo. Uh, I'm definitely excited for a raid boss that's actually kind of interesting. Like the Regis have not been interesting to me personally. So I'm really excited for uh, Mewtwo uh, and just going around doing like a raid day or a raid weekend with the squad. Going absolutely crazy for Mewtwo's. Um, I know there's a lot of people saying like, oh, with Mewtwo being available for everyone, then that makes mine not special. And it's kind of like, well, realistically, was it special in the first place? The reason it's special is because you like it. Or that should be the reason why it's special is because it's yours and you got one and you know, you worked with your friends to get it and that is why it's special. It's not special just because it's a Mewtwo or just because it's exclusive. Someone else having a Mewtwo as well doesn't make yours any less special. So I'm definitely excited. This gives other people the opportunity to get a Mewtwo if they haven't got one, get a better one if they haven't got a decent one. Um, just all round, I think this is good. I personally think it was inevitable as well. As with a lot of features in the game or in other games, some things may come as exclusive initially and then over time, you know, they're released as DLC or bonus free content or free upgrades and patches and things like that. So it's not just Pokemon that does this. So Mewtwo raids, I am stoked for. Second part, the birds are coming back. Moltres, Zapdos and Articuno will be back in raids. Um, I'm I'm fine with this. I'm, I'm neither here nor there. <laughs> I, I uh, did trade for my shiny Moltres and so maybe I should have waited until after the Ultra Unlock was announced, but it is what it is. Another chance for people to get shinies. If you didn't get a shiny during the Moltres day, Articuno day, Zapdos day, if you didn't get one while they were in the boxes for research, last chance, I reckon, guys. Like, probably not the last chance. I'm sure they'll be back again in the future, but it's a good chance to try and get a shiny if you did miss out, if you were busy during those time periods, uh, if you weren't able to get two raids, go and do them now. Compared to the Regis, I'd much prefer to do the Legendary Birds as raids. After that is the regional eggs, so uh, eggs from your friends, so what we were calling Alolan eggs, but what we should be referring to as 7k eggs, uh, will for a short time period be able to hatch regional Pokemon. So this can be from any like any region from first gen. So if my friend in Japan sends me an egg, it's not necessarily going to be a Farfetch'd. It could be Farfetch'd, Taurus, Mr. Mun, or Kangaskhan. Uh, so if you've only got friends in your own country, you've still got equal chance of getting different regionals. This is the thing that I'm probably the most excited for, um, definitely. I'm not sure what the rates are going to be for the regional eggs, like what rate like you know regional versus Alolan hatches, but I'm stoked just to get my own uh, my own Pokemon. Like, I suppose for Mr. Mime, I had to trade for it. I've only ever been able to trade for it. I haven't been to Europe yet. So I don't have a Mr. Mime that I've caught myself. I don't have one with decent IVs. Uh, same for Taurus. I was able to catch my own one, but I didn't get one with decent IVs. Kangaskhan even, like surprisingly, I have caught so many of those. I still don't have like a decent powerhouse of a Kangaskhan. Farfetch'd, I'm less 
you know, crazy about. I would certainly like a good one, but it's, uh, it's not one that's like driving me nuts. But um, I'm stoked to be able to get one, and then that also gives me the ability to trade those to other people. So I can't trade Pokemon that have been traded to me, but if I hatch a Mr. Mime and someone else during this event doesn't get one, I can trade them one because, you know, if it's in my decks at least, I can give them that Pokemon. Again, a lot of people saying that, you know, regionals being in eggs devalues their trade of like their regional trade value, which again, I disagree with. I don't think every single person is going to spend money on incubators, uh, hatch a thousand eggs during the event window, send and receive as many gifts as they can to optimize getting those eggs. So again, people are still going to need to trade for regionals. Not every single person is going to hatch every single regional during this event. Um, so fret not. Guys, I'm sure, I'm very, very sure that your regionals will still have trade value. For example, in America, my Kangaskhan has premium trade value. In Japan, it has zero trade value because everyone had a Kangaskhan event here. So it just depends where you are in the world. And lastly, the increased spawn of Kanto Pokemon. I'm neither here nor there. I'm not phased about that. I probably, I mean, there's a whole bunch of Gen 1 Pokemon that are shiny eligible that I don't have, such as Growlithe, um, such as Cloyster. So I would definitely like to have by default with those Pokemon spawning more frequently because of the Gen 1 spawn increase, then I suppose it skews your chances to be better in getting a shiny for those ones because other stuff isn't spawning. That's, you know, Gen 2 and 3 non-shiny eligible. There's going to be more Gen 1 eligible, which therefore means more Gen 1 shiny eligible Pokemon spawning. So yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> So those are my thoughts and feelings on the uh, the Ultra Bonus Unlock. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be more stuff coming out with it, potentially. Possibly new changes to the EX Raid system. Who knows? There's going to be so much stuff changing in the game uh, with just how much Niantic has been working on and like how many updates and events and things we've had this year alone. It's been insane. So I don't think they're going to be slowing down at all uh, for the rest of this year. So let's jump into the rest of the video, guys. Um, after <laughs> my camera made the fateful plunge into the ditch. Uh, we went back up um, to where the waterfall is. It's uh, on kind of like the private property of this, um, it's the studio space of a woodcarver who uh, works in the area. So he hand carves these incredible tea tree dolls, these absolutely stunning hand carved dolls, hand painted. He invited us into his studio to have a look around and look at his wood carvings and his pieces. We got talking and he, you know, explain to us how, you know, the significance and the symbolism behind the waterfall, behind the fox, like the kitsune statues, and kind of the, the meaning behind the Fushimi and Ari shrines and the gates. We um, got to talking as well, uh, he was asking us about our favourite Japanese foods, and I told him that I really liked umeboshi, and he just went into his kitchen and grabbed out a whole jar of umeboshi, which are these pickled plums, uh, and gave them to me as a gift to take home. A really incredible experience just getting to chat with uh, lo the local craftsman and get to know a bit more about the area, a bit more about him and his life and um, his craft. He has over 500 chisels in this workspace uh, and he's been doing this for over 30 years which is truly phenomenal. After that we, um, we walked up to a small shrine area behind the waterfall um, and this was kind of like a little bit of a shock for me. Like uh, We knew that there had been paths had been closed due to Typhoon Jebby, uh, so we couldn't walk the original track, but this is kind of like the side track, um, which you can take to the top of Shimi and Ari, and just the absolute damage that had been done, trees coming down, narrowly missing people's houses, um, goodness knows further up the mountain if there was other properties that were damaged, but this for me was especially I suppose a bit of a shock because I'd been here not only a few months ago in April, I had been here with Alan um, and just the place looked so so similar and so different at the same time. And it was really uh, sobering and eye-opening to just witness the power of Mother Nature and the power of natural energy um, and how it's just changed the landscape entirely. I, I do really hope that everyone that was here is safe uh, in the Kyoto region, in the Fushimina region. Um, the damage looked intense, but I do hope that um, everyone was okay. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments down below again your thoughts for the Ultra Unlock and what do you think of Fushimi Inari Shrine uh, and what I was able to show for you today. So have a wonderful, wonderful morning, noon, noon, night, whatever time it is for you and I'll catch you guys in the next one.